Now I very really, uh, glad, very glad to have uh, Miss Lucy Park here as a third speaker. Lucy Park is from South Korea. She is a data miner and also a founding member and director at Team P O P O N G. Popong, Popong, Popong. At South Korea, based on uh, non partisan very important non-partisan <laughs> volunteer group that merge in an analysis of various government resources to make the legislative process more accessible and uh, accountable or more easy to understand. Now welcome Ms. Lucy Park. Uh, thank you. Uh, 我我叫 Lucy Park， 啊啊不知道 anymore， so I'm gonna talk in English. It's very nice to meet you. I'm from South Korea. 啊，我我的韩韩国人， and um， 啊、uh, it's 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 very nice to speak in front of you. Um, we're not very uh far away. I mean South Korea and Taiwan, and um. Uh, we've seen your web page, your programs, your projects on the web, and we were very impressed. And um, we really loved your work, and we kind of wanted to network with you and um, talk about what, um, how we can improve, uh, possibly Taiwan and South Korea, but in a broader sense, uh, Asia, uh, democracy in Asia, and possibly broader uh, the democracy in the world. And so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, our experience in South Korea today. Um, it's not much. It may be a, a little behind, or some ideas may be um, uh, very uh, uh, different, or some ideas may be very um, interesting. Or, uh, but I hope uh, any part of it might be uh, insightful to any of you. Okay. Uh, you can go see our slides here. Oh, sorry. Okay. This is not my computer, sorry. Um, you can go see the slides here at tiny.cc, gov, HTML, or in case anybody here likes PDFs, <laughs> just in case, um, you can go see the slides at gov, PDF, uh, of course, with a zero in the middle. And, um, well, it's in SlideShare, so <laughs> pardon that. Um, first, let me give you my int introduction. I'm called uh, Pak Eun Dong in South Korean terms. And you can also find me on, on the web as Echo Juliet, or sh in short, E90. And I'm currently a PhD student at Seoul National University, and alongside with of course, my uh, advisor's approval. Uh, I am a member of Team Papong. I used to do it secretly, and then he found out, so now he approves. And uh, the goal of my life, it may be something um, too broad, but what I aim to do is lower the barrier of knowledge for a various domains, and possibly uh, currently, at the current state, I'm trying to lower barriers for politics for ordinary citizens. And this is the team I'm working with. Um, we're called Team Papong, short for Public Open Political Engineering, but that just came out. Um, it's just a cute name. Um, we are thinking that we're popping out ideas, very good ideas to improve the world. And uh, we're nonpartisan. Uh, we're 100% uh, part-time and um, we're a voluntary group of students in their 20s and 30s, uh, possibly very much like you. Um, and we're geographically located all over the world, but that's like, like about 10 people. So it's very different with Gov, which you have a very big uh, group. And uh, we prim primarily focus on, but not limited to, the national parliament in South Korea. We're trying to think broader things 
in the future, but currently we're focusing on the South Korea uh, parliament. And this is how we met Gov in the first place. I, I really don't know what it says in the back, but I, I tried Google Translate and it didn't sound so bad. Is it something good? Well, yeah, okay, great. Uh, that's something um, that happened on the web uh, like in July 2013, so it's been more than one year. And that's how we uh, met you guys. And um, yeah, I guess we can now communicate more now that we've met face to face. So let, let me talk about how we started out in South Korea. First of all, um, you probably don't know much about South Korean politics, so let me just fill, fill you in with some information. Um, it may be same in other countries. It may be a little different. Um, uh, but there's a national hatred for politics in South Korea. Um, the reason is, uh, first of all, the uh, politics was very corrupt in the past. Um, people got arrested for just talking what they thought. And um, they even, well, ar arrest it wasn't so bad. They, they even got killed. And that wasn't very long time ago. It was like 20, 30 years ago, which means it was um, even, um, it happened to our parents. So we still are very careful about talking about politics in the South Korean society. Um, so when, when we, we tell our friends and families that we're building a website on politics, they go like, why are you doing that kind of stuff? You're, it's very dangerous. You might, your server might blow, get blown up or, or you, might get, uh, you might disappear someday. And that's the uh, result that, that we get, that, uh, the, the answer that we get when we, when we tell our relatives. It, it isn't the same in Taiwan, is it? It's a bit different, right? Well, a, a little different, a little uh, similar. Yeah, and I think that happens. And um, it's changing a lot. Um, people are no longer throwing things in the National Assembly. Um, they're, they're getting a little gentler. And uh, about the elections, uh, we get uh, one vote for all uh, citizens that are 20 years and up. And uh, we vote for the National Assembly every four years and vote for the president every five years. And there are 300 members in the National Assembly. I heard there were about like 140 around in Taiwan. 150. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have a relatively big assembly compared to the population because I heard even the US had 500. Um, but I, I don't know if that's something good or bad. Uh, the, the vote rate is, is, is quite low. It's around its 40s. And according to a study, uh, more than uh, only about 40% of the population know who their representatives are. So this means that um, people, aren't, um, people aren't really interested in politics. They, they just, I, I told you before that people hate politics and they aren't interested. And what is more is that they don't really know much, probably because they aren't interested, possibly because if they know more, they can become dangerous. But what, is, um, what makes the problem even bigger is that we all still vote. But if we vote uh, in the sense that we don't know, we, we don't have any knowledge, if we don't have any knowledge and have a vote, it's very dangerous. If we... Um, go to an exam without knowing anything, what will happen? It's, it's something like that. Um, our point, point, point of view is something like that. So uh, what we're thinking is that what we need is a healthy vote and monitor loop. So we vote and then monitor the, peop uh, the, the members of parliament, and then we vote again. And in this process, uh, we have to assess whether these members are doing good or bad. And eligible members should be elected again, and those that aren't should fail the, uh, fail the exam, fail the election. And so for, for this, citizens have to get more engaged to politics. First of all, get rid of the hatred, and then get to know more about politics as well as the politicians. And we do have government websites that are made for this purpose, but what happens is that 
they scan all the documents and uh, there we have to go through OCRs and um, PDF extraction tools and um, we have act active X's and if we try to go into a website, it says that it has unofficial certifications. And so Chrome is telling us, uh, is giving us a warning that you shouldn't go into this website because it's dangerous to you. And wh what is more is that they, they don't let Google or other uh, crawlers um, access their sites. Of course they can do it technically, but, but morally they, they shouldn't do it. And uh, so this happens in South Korea, which means when people search for a term, when people search for a bill in South Korea, they won't get any results from the government. They just get like blogs of people talking about it. So um, we were saying, what, what, what is this? What, why is this happening? We should stop here about talking more about the South Korean government websites because it's harmful for us. I mean, we shouldn't, this, this shouldn't happen. And what we heard later on from National Assembly, Assembly members is that um, why this happened was because uh, the National Assembly website was actually made not for the people in the first place. It was made for the members, for them to do legislations. And so that's kind of the reason why it wasn't so accessible. So what uh, Team Papong uh, tried to do was, uh, was three things. First, to improve existing tools, existing government websites. But of course, we don't have access to the server. We can, it's, it's, it doesn't seem so hard, but, um, but still we have to improve those tools that are uh, existing in the space. And then we have to let the people get to the information. We have to deliver the data. And then uh, we are trying to open the communication channel between the government and the citizens. Uh, first, about uh, improving the existing tools. What we built was politics in Korea. You can go to this URL here, uh, en.poker.kr. Uh, uh, it seems like uh, a similar game, but um, we didn't really target that. Well, actually, we t tried targeting that in the first, at first, but um, people said you shouldn't do that. Uh, it, it's a shortage of politics in Korea. Um, uh, so what we thought in, when we were building politics in Korea, uh, we thought we needed better information sources, which will help the people to get uh, more knowledge and so that they can um, uh, think uh, better with knowledge, and what what we uh, the the strategy that we were um, uh, we implemented were about five points. The first was to aggregate dissipated information all around various government websites. They ha uh, what they what they say in public is that we have like a hundred government websites. So what the citizens have to do is go through 100 government websites to find what they're looking for. So what we did was to aggregate, not 100, but actually two or three, but um, aggregate the dissipated information in those websites. And um, they didn't have a unique ID among those 100 websites. So what we had to do was assign an ID for each of the person, we had to assume, uh, build an algorithm for it. Um, and then we linked those politici politicians' names and we extracted uh, meeting logs from PDFs and uh, got the names, got the dates, got the title and everything and tried linking all the data in various uh, web sources. And uh, we tried to show the whole political timeline of each member, like the whole political time span in his life, so that um, we can see uh, what he did in the past, because uh, we're currently in the 19th assembly, 19th uh, session of the assembly. Um, but when we go, when we try electing the 20th, we'd have to confirm what, he's, what, he's, what he or she has done in the 19th or 18th or 17th and try not to forget because forgetting is what we do as humans. And we, that's why we need the uh, web resources to help us 
not to forget. So that was what we trying to do, tried to do. So that was the reason that we not only gathered the 19th assembly data, but the whole range of data. And we tried pursuing machine readable formats and better, better technolo uh, technological approaches. And then uh, we tried to accept the user participation in the development process, which is why we opened all the uh, code as Gov does. And uh, we use user voice as, uh, for, for people that are not that used to technology to give us ideas. And then a fifth is that I told you that we're, we're just a member of 10, which means uh, Gov has a very big uh, man force. You have a lot of man hours. But Papang, we, we're, we're all voluntary. We're, we're just 10. And so what we have to do is we have to automate everything so that even if all of us cannot work anymore, uh, politics in Korea still has to run. So that is um, one of the reasons why we're uh, not very fast in development, but still um, we can be very um, clean and not, sometimes not very accurate, but um, it, we can, I think this is something that we can be very transparent and sustainable and in very, very low costs. And um, so this is what politics in Korea looks like. You can, you can all go through your, uh, in your laptops, and you can ask questions later on about co components inside it. And this is one of the members' pages. You can see that this, uh, this member is in the Tonghap Jumbo party. And uh, our internationalization isn't so good, you can see. But it's, it's OK in Korean, although you may not believe. but. Um, yeah, it's, it's okay in Korean, and you can go see the profile, and if you click on a year, then you can see all the people that were born in the year. If you click the party, uh, you can see all the parties, uh, party members, and uh, the education. This is the uh, school that this member graduated, and if you go click this, you can see uh, which members graduated from this uh, school and the address and work experiences and the election when when the, when she was born when she was elected and uh, when she failed an election and when she won an election this is all shown on a timeline and then you can go see her recent legislations like where she is she's in the top 95th which means she's in the low 5% and she ranks 285th in the total National Assembly, and these are the um, legislations that she recently proposed. And these are the statements that we got uh, from the PDFs, um, and we parsed them. And if you go t into any of these um, statements, you can go see the whole uh, dialogue in that session. And uh, we can see who she competed with in other um, National Assembly elections. You can see this, this means um, that she's a proportional electorate, which means she didn't have any co competitors. She was a very important member in the party, and so she just got a seat in the National Assembly by uh, uh, getting recommended by the party. And yeah, so that's what we uh, do, uh, that, that the, that's our tool in politics in Korea. And we have citizens that take the URLs and talk about issues like you shouldn't do this and you sh we should do this uh, on the Twitter, uh, Twitter sphere. And um, yeah, it's quite, quite interesting that they're, talk they're using our tool to talk about politics. And the second thing is that we deliver uh, the information to people. So one of our core principles is, is that don't make the people come to the data, make the data go to them. Uh, so what we do, one of the things that we built was PokerBot. Um, it's not the gamble bot. It's, um, it delivers uh, legislations, bills, that are proposed uh, in real time to Twitter and there are approximately 25 per day. And we mention proposers' Twitter IDs along with the bills so that um, the, uh, for, for two things, uh, so that uh, we can tell members that we exist. And they actually like us. They, they follow us a lot and they, yeah, they probably like us. 
and um, uh, so that the people can actually directly give mentions to the members of parliament in Twitter uh, without any hassle trying to look, look up uh, their IDs or email addresses or anything. And, but uh, for this uh, poker ball, we have some issues, like, like 25 bills, uh, tweets per day. It doesn't sound so much, but for some people, that's very overwhelming. So um, we're kind of um, experimenting, like how many uh, uh, tweets do we have to, um, like how, how, what's the, what, what should be the interval between the tweets? Or should we just um, send out um, bills that were decided upon or any other uh, ideas. Um, and one of the ideas that we actually uh, implemented afterwards was my page in Politics in Korea, which uh, only sends you the relevant information that you're interested in. If you enter some keywords to Politics in Korea, then you'll get uh, information about the related bills. Um, in technical sense, we did topic modeling, um, which uh, is a natural language processing um, method uh, that extracts topics, and um, we're kind of working on it. And it's not—it's going to get better in the future. And I hope you can see it, but we're not currently doing Taiwanese, so but we may in the future by you probably. And so um, we'll, we'll, we'll probably look forward to that. And what we're planning to do is to send weekly and yearly uh, report cards, digest emails um, that about decided laws, not only proposed laws, but what, what happened in the last year. Um, I, I mean, in the 18th assembly, the last assembly, 2,000 laws were changed, which means in uh, four years, 500 uh, each year, 500 laws, uh, terms changed, and that's a lot. And people have to know what changed and for what reasons. So we're trying to make that in, into a digest and handle, hand that over to people so that they can understand what's happening in the legislation processes. And what we're also doing is to uh, provide APIs and data downloads. And because uh, the first thing that we thought was that why are we crawling all this data and using the data to ourselves? Why don't we uh, give this out to everybody else so that they can make uh, an app of their, their, their selves? Because everybody has a different perce perspective of uh, the, the world. And in our perspective, w w I think we're very neutral. I think we're very nonpartisan, but some other people may think that we're not. Some other people want to be partisan, so we want to encourage them to use our tools to make their own. And uh, actually, it shouldn't be us that's doing that. That should be the government. But unfortunately, they're not doing it, so what we're trying to do is that oh, we're, we're from a very... Um, conservative country, which means that the uh, officials really won't listen to us. We won't, uh, no, it's not that they won't listen to us. We won't even get the chance to talk to them. So what we're trying to do is to show and lead by example so that they can listen. They can see that people actually need this. So we currently have a couple apps and services and researches used by our data. And um, this, is some, this is a saying that I really like from the Papalo Project. Uh, they say that um, if, somebody, if anybody does something this burdensome, then the civil society can spend less time transforming data and more time applying to the problems they actually face. And I think this is very, very well written. Is if anybody's here from Papalo, then I, I really would like to give you a applaud. And the third thing is that we really want to open the communication between the citizens and um, the members of parliament. And this is the communication loop that we're uh, drawing in our heads. First, um, I've told, I repeatedly told you that uh, we're trying to make the public um, inform the, themselves uh, no more uh, and um, I think once they know more and when they give more attention, then they will act more. 
they will reach out more, they will want to reach out more to the members. It's, it's, it's another problem whether they will be reached or not, but it's, it's a matter of whether they want to or not in the current state. And once they want to do, and once they reach, reach uh, the members of parliament and they make a successful communication, then they will know each other better. And which will make them think more and come to better conclusions and then go for more communication and then come back and I think that would be a very wonderful loop. And um, I don't know if we're going to have direct democracy in the future as assisted by technology. That may happen. If not, um, I think uh, the other way to go is to make that communication very effective and very efficient so that we all can um, give our ideas to our representatives. And um, yeah, I think this is very important. And currently, politics in Korea focuses just on uh, handling information. And um, people are, um, but uh, the members of parliament and the people are actually uh, contacting between Twitter using our platform. But uh, in the future, I think we, um, we have to think about more ideas. And I think uh, Gov and other societies, other organizations in the world, and including Papong, we can discuss on ways to how we can improve the communication between these two groups. And I would like to get a lot of ideas. And if you go through um, our website and see a lot of bugs, you can always send a pull request. It's always welcome. And um, uh, I hope we can gather a lot of ideas so that we can make a, a lot beautiful, wonderful future. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Yeah, here. Yeah. Right. Oh, it will. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, first question Do you roll your own API? Second question. Do you actually scrape the PDF? If so, really, how many had you lost? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, we opened a public API through data.papong.com, and it's uh, currently on its version 0 0.1. Rephrase, uh -huh. do you roll your own API, or do you actually based on other API? Uh, based on other API? Uh, oh, no, uh, we didn't, uh, yeah, we tried using other um, platforms, uh, for example, Popolo, and we're, we're very interested in, in it. Um, but as, uh, as I told you, we're, we're a very, very small group. And um, first of all, using uh, existing um, technology or uh, platforms can lower our, um, our entries to, um, to, this, um, to the services, but it, it can also be a, uh, a barrier as well because uh, we weren't uh, in the discussion from the first place, and so we have to learn another. So, um, uh, but we want to merge, pro possibly, we, uh, we would really like to merge um, and accept global um, um, specifications in the future, and that would be very nice. And yes, PDFs were a pain, and we didn't lose any heads because we, do we, we don't have so many. <laughs> And, um, but it was really painful. And we learned a lot about PDFs. Um, and uh, actually, um, we went through a lot of PDF tools because uh, I think you really must understand we handle CJK characters. And that is, I mean, PDFs in the US, I think that's easy. That's not, that's something very easy. You should try something in, in Chinese or Korean or, yeah. And I think you really, everyone in this room w would probably agree. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Maybe not. Yeah, here. Uh, one question, I'm curious about uh, uh, can you take more one example or more or in the future, will you consider to collaborate with some NGOs or social 
movements to do some maybe uh, f uh, help the agriculture or financial some NGOs to cooperate uh, with uh, with the bills or other things. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, you mean like um, other NGOs in South Korea, right? Yes. Um, yes, I think that's something um, that we can do. Um, but what we are currently thinking is rather than cooperating to eat, uh, with each one of them, um, we are trying to build tools that can be helpful for um, a lot of societies. We're trying to generalize them. Okay, time is up. So we have a panel discussion here now, so please have a seat over there.